Good morning, everyone. Let's get my mat set up in the right place here. Welcome, whether you're on Facebook this morning or you're joining us via Zoom. We're already at 62 people, 65. Great to see all of you here. Happy Saturday. Hoofda, what a week. Glad that you're all here in such a beautiful group of people practicing some yoga. Connecting to self. Good morning, Beth. You made it. Great to see. Yay, Jay is with you. Love it. Erin, good morning. Mark, good morning. Joanna, she says she knows she's going to feel better after this. I agree. You are. Everyone here is going to feel a little lighter, a little more open, a little more connected. Thought we'd work today in our shoulders, our chest, our upper back, our neck. It's been such an intense week. And so I thought I wear my shirt too, more love, because I think this is what we all need right now. So I hope it speaks to all of you. I'm assuming it is because you're showing up. Zach says, yes, yes, yes. Susanna says, my sound is breaking up. I'm wondering if that is the case. Can someone else let me know? Um, Suzanne, I'm hearing no from other people. So um, it might be on your end. Sorry, I know technology. We've had some issues too, technology wise this week. So everything is, everything is uh, going on this week. All right. So let's dive in. Looks like sound is okay on most people's end, which is great. Thanks for letting me know that though. I really appreciate it because you, you never know. Sarah from Charleston, South Carolina, welcome. Love that you're here. Sally is in her RV. Welcome, Sally. I'm glad you're here as well. Sounds great. So, Gosh, where do we start? I'm really glad to be here with all of you as well. Michelle, thanks for saying that. So I, we're gonna talk about today a work with um, division, separation, and you know, something we've been seeing big time in our country and maybe in ourself as well. So I went back to the Yoga Sutras, they are, uh, uh, 3,000 year old text and very, a lot of wisdom. And then the Yoga Sutras pro proclaim that all of our struggles in life are because we have forgotten the truth of our being and we have strayed into a belief of separation. So let me just say that again. All of our struggles in life are because we've forgotten the truth of our being and we've strayed into a belief of separation. So this faulty belief of separation in the yoga tradition is called something, it's called the Maya Mala. And there are actually three sort of faulty ways of thinking that overcome everyone. So I just want you to all know, none of us get a free pass from these faulty ways of thinking. Happens to every single one of us just simply because we're a human being. And the faulty belief, uh, what I like about the teaching of these malas, these three faulty beliefs, the word mala is actually uh, translated to mean almost like a film or a veil or a shroud that prevents us from actually really seeing the reality of life or the truth of our being. And these veils or these shrouds, they live in the body, they live in the pelvis, they live in the heart, and then they live sort of in the throat headspace. And the one we're going to work today with is our throat headspace because the mala that lives here is the mala of separation. So it's the faulty belief that we are different than our neighbor, that um, we are right and someone else is wrong. It is the belief that there is separation between us and others. 
and it certainly is at the heart of all prejudice. It's at the heart of all racial discrimination. It's the heart of, at the heart of misogyny. It's at the heart of any kind of disconnection. And it's certainly at the heart of our political system, unfortunately, right? This huge division, this huge black and white. So to go back to this deep um, ancient teaching, the way we work with Mayimala is we have to focus in on ourself. So Mayimala, when we get stuck, when we get shrouded up here, it's because we're too focused on the other and what they're not doing right. Instead of turning our awareness in and taking care of this inner space. So the truth of our being, so if we go back to that teaching of the sutra, which is all of our struggles in life are because we've forgotten the truth of our being. And we've strayed into this belief of separation. What is the truth of our being? Well, the truth of our being is that we're all connected. We're all interdependent on one another. Our DNA, DNA is wired to need other people. And, you know, it's been the Dalai Lama's mantra for the last half century, this idea of the butterfly effect, which I know all of you have heard. The flapping of a butterfly's wings in Beijing causes atmosphere, atmospheric changes which over time can affect weather patterns in Vancouver. So the idea is we're all connected, we're all interdependent. It's not us against them or, you know, it's we're all together in this. So this idea I think helps us cultivate compassion, consideration. Um, and again, instead of focusing out there, today we focus in and we take care of this space today because truly that's what we have control over. So let's do this. I'd like to teach you a mudra this morning, a kash mudra it's called, and it's to open the throat. So we're going to work a lot today in this throat region, throat, upper neck. So it's thumb to your middle finger, just like that. And then you can turn your palms to face up. So thumb is resting right at the base of your middle finger. All right, let's take, let's take a nice deep breath in. Exhale, release this week, release the tension that you've been carrying, the unrest, the fear, the worry. We've all been there, myself included. On this next exhale, release some of the resistance in your heart. And just know that for this next hour, there is absolutely nothing that you need to solve. There's nothing you need to fix. There's nothing you need to improve upon. This is simply your hour to turn inward and clean house, clean your own inner sanctuary, purify your system, so that when we come out of this practice an hour from now, we're all lighter. We're all more tuned into our essential compassion. And we're all in much more of a state of unity consciousness rather than a state of separation and division. So we're going to stay here seated upright for three, four more breaths. Maybe already starting to use that ujjayi sound, that ha sound in the back of the throat. And noticing how with each exhale, you can hear your breath, you can extend your breath longer, and that you can feel the power of breathing out our stress, our doubt, our division, our anger, our frustration, our clenching, our holding. I just essentially want to use this practice to get back to baseline, to get back to the truth of our being, who we are. So let's together bring our hands together so the palms touch lightly in front of the heart. Find your word or your intention that you'd like to practice toward today. It might be clarity, ease, calm, 
stability, safety, vision, creativity, connection. And then as always, we typically start every yoga class chanting OM. Why do we do this? We do it for lots of reasons. We do it, do it because it connects all of us, all hundred of us on this call. We also do it because it calms our amygdala. And we do it today because we're working to clear and purify the throat, the face, where this Maya Mala lives, the shroud sort of covers our light. So we'll be doing a fair amount of breathing and even some chanting in our practice today, just as a way to really start to clear and open. So today I invite you to chant three times. I'll be doing it. You can certainly be in tandem with me or you can do your own thing. You can choose whatever tone you want. This isn't about the singing voice. This is about creating vibration and opening the body. So let's take a deep breath in. Let all that air go. Just a reminder, Om has three syllables. Ah, ooh, mm. Let's do it again, breathing in, and now we'll chant together. Ah. Perhaps breathing in again, second round here. Ah. Last time, breathing in deeply, allowing this chant to open your throat, your heart. Ah. And then take a deep breath in. As you breathe out, bow towards your hands, towards your heart. Slowly release the hands, open the eyes. All right, so let's come on to our backs. We're gonna start on our backs. Here's to working on connecting more to the truth of our being. So as you start on your back, bring your knees in towards your chest, rock side to side a bit. So the heart of the yoga practice is sensation. So even as you start here on your back, just rocking side to side, just commit that for the next hour. Again, there's nothing you need to fix or figure out. We're certainly not gonna solve the problems of the world in the next hour. Simply we're trying to tune in to this present moment and to all the sensations that are present in our bodies helps us tap into our sense of vitality and aliveness. From here, extend your legs straight up into the sky and begin to flex and point the feet a bit. You can even shake out the legs. Breathing in nice and deep. Exhale, slowly lower feet to the floor. So feet are hip distance with the part. Arms come at the side of the body. Elbows are bent, so palms are facing in towards one another, pressing the backs of the arms, the elbows down into the floor to really start to lift the chest a little bit here, drawing the shoulder blades underneath you. So you get a nice, expansive, beautiful chest. From here, let's take a breath in and then exhale, slowly lower the hands down to the floor. Now inhale, bring the knees in towards the chest and float the arms all the way up overhead behind you. As you exhale, straighten legs into the sky and slowly float the arms down to the floor. As you inhale this time, bend the knees, arms sweep up overhead, feet come to the floor. And on the exhale, lift the pelvis up, just let the arms come back down to the earth. We stay here in just a 
easy bridge pose. Inhale, lift the pelvis, the chest a little bit higher, and then exhale slowly. See if you can almost feel each vertebrae come down one at a time, eventually the entire pelvis on the floor. Pelvis releases, tension in the hips starts to release, hands rest on the belly. We'll pause here. We call this pose constructive rest, breathing into the abdomen. So deep abdominal breathing. Use the exhale to hear your breath. So we're establishing our connection to the ujjayi breath, which is this vibrational quality in the back of the throat. So you're breathing in and out of your nose, but you're hearing it in the back of the throat. We want this ujjayi breath to stay with us for the entire practice. By the way, when we're new at this, we lose it, right? It goes away, it's okay. I'll keep cueing you to come back to that breath. It has this beautiful calming effect for our nervous system, which we all need. Our nervous system's all a bit jangled this week. Let's bring our knees in again, inhaling, arms stretch up overhead. Now, as you exhale, stretch the legs into the sky and slowly float the arms down to the earth. Your low back is really pressing into the floor. Now, as you inhale this time, slow lowering of the feet to the floor. Knees are bent. Arms stretch up again overhead. Now, hear the exhale, that ha sound. As you lift your pelvis up, float your arms to the earth. And we stay here in bridge pose again, inhaling, allowing the pelvis, the heart to lift a little bit. And then again, it's a very slow conscious release, trying to articulate through the spine as you bring everything back down to the earth. Hands rest on the abdomen, feeling your feet on the floor, feeling your elbows, your shoulders, back of the head on the floor. Coming home to the breath again, hearing that exhale, that sound in the back of the throat. Already we're shifting our nervous systems in such a short period of time. Let's do this sequence one final time. We like to work in sets of three in yoga. Let's inhale, knees to chest, arms stretch up behind you overhead. As the exhale comes, stretch those legs up as the arms float down gently and easily to the floor. So these are very fluid movements. Inhale, knees bend, feet coming to the floor, arms stretching up overhead. Now on this exhale, lift the pelvis, arms come to the earth. We stay here. Inhale, one breath, come a little higher. And then again, it's a very slow release all the way down to the earth. Bring your knees in towards your chest. Roll over onto your right side. Let's pause here in the fetal position. We all need a good fetal position this week. This is a pose of safety, drawing in. And then we'll slowly come all the way back up. So I like this concept that part of how we get stuck in my mala is we're too focused on the other, right? We're too focused out there instead of in here. So really this practice today, drawing us fully inward. Let's all come to all fours. And then just start to move the body. You might be doing some big circles with the hips. There might be some other movements here that feel good. This all fours position is a really great place to practice just nonlinear movement, meaning you don't have to think about it. Just let the body move you instead of the mind tell you what to do. It's a different way of approaching things because usually it is our mind that is in the driver's seat, although you've heard me say it before, the mind is a great passenger, but not always a great driver. Keep moving, let's do about 30 more seconds here of just allowing the body to move. Again, no particular poses or movements that you need to do, you're just starting to anchor into the body and allow it to tell you how it wants to move. The, the body does have a voice. Unfortunately, it's been silenced a lot. Uh, 
Eventually, we all return to this all fours position, wrist underneath shoulders. Inhale, pelvis tilting forward, the heart space lifting. And then as we exhale, rounding, pelvis draws under, navel draws up, head releases. Keep going here. Ensuring that you really can hear your breath. I like to have that be such a solid foundation for you in this practice today. The beautiful sound of your breath in the back of the throat. Eventually, when you feel ready, downward facing dog, hands walk forward, toes curl under. As you come into this first down dog of the day, bring with it, bring to it your beginner's mind. And the older we get, the more entrenched we get in our thought patterns. Also, the more we believe we know what's right. So for this whole practice today, and especially this first down dog, bringing this sense of a beginner's mind, which brings with it some innocence, some curiosity, many fewer expectations when we initiate beginner's mind. And eventually when you've had enough time to explore your first down dog, lower your knees to the mat as we come into Anahatasana. So it's a variation of child's pose, a little bit different because we'll keep our seat lifted. So seat stays lifted, arms stretch forward. Forehead could be on the floor here, or maybe chin on the floor. So if you have, um, some more flexibility already in your shoulders, you might be able to have your chin on the floor. Otherwise, forehead on the floor, you could also have a black underneath your forehead if that's a better variation for you. This variation really seeks to open our shoulders and our upper chest, which is where we are headed today. So experiment with this variation. You could even lift the heel of your hand away from the mat. And those sit bones are lifting up towards the sky. Let's take a nice deep breath in. On this exhale, open the mouth. Big ha sound as you release. Coming all the way back up to all fours. From here, uh, let's, let's take our right arm into the sky. I was gonna do this later, but I think now's the time. Right arm into the sky. Exhale, thread that right arm underneath the left forehead or side of the head to the floor, threading the needle. Left hand walks forward, left armpit slightly lifted. Right arm is rooting into the ground as you start to open chest, navel towards the sky, rolling more towards the back of the head. Now legs could stay in. You could also extend your left leg back. Or you can extend your left leg out to the side. So all possible variations here. But where I'd like your awareness to land is where you have the most constriction, the most tightness, the most fight. <laughs> can you breathe into that? And use your exhale to soften, to settle, to let some things go. And then on an inhale, we'll breathe in and slowly come back out. Couple rotations in the pelvis. Let's take a cat cow, pelvis tilts, heart lifts. Exhale, rounding. All right, second side, left arm now floats. So we're threading the needle here. Left arm threads underneath the right, coming to rest on your left temple. Right hand walks forward. Again, your legs, you can either keep them just drawn in towards one another. You could extend right leg back or right leg out to the side. 
this pose really targets that area around your scapula, the shoulder blades. And oh my goodness, there usually is a lot living back there. <laughs> There's a lot of tension, a lot of holding back there. So in yoga, we want to go there. We don't want to be scared of it. We try to face our shadows in this practice. So we go to where there is clenching and holding and fear. Breathe into it. So bring the light of the breath into your intensity. Use your exhale. Big ha to let some things go. Let's breathe in again. And then on the exhale, slowly coming all the way back out. That's always a big pose. So that's why I like you to pause here before you rush into the next pose. Get your equilibrium back. Maybe take another cat cow here. And now back to downward facing dog. Go a little wider with your feet in this down dog. And then slowly start to walk your hands back towards your feet. So you arrive in Uttanasana at the back of the mat. All right, now in this first forward fold, we start to get a sneak peek at what we're carrying in our neck and our throat. So really let your head dangle, let, let your head release here. Shake the head no, shake the head yes. Let's also add some buzzing of the lips. Letting the jaw move side to side. Any kind of forward fold, any kind of inversion where the head is below the heart, so we're gonna be doing this today, is really good at clearing this maya mala, this sense, this false sense of separation, this false sense of black and white thinking, good versus bad, dark versus light. All right, bend the knees, inhale, sweep arms out to the side as you come all the way up to standing, and then exhale, hands down right in front of the heart. Release the hands, walk all the way forward to the front of the mat, settle into your best mountain pose, firm legs, solid foundation. So we always want to start with this solid, steadfast base. Toes are spread, legs are strong. From the pelvis, you're lengthening up through your spine, shoulders drawing back. Starting with just some simple breath and movement to begin to warm these shoulders a bit more. Inhale, arms stretch out to the sides, hands draw together overhead, and then exhale, hear your breath. So let's really get into the sound of the breath, that ujjayi sounding breath. Again, inhale, arms out to the side. Exhale. Let's do one more, really feeling that foundation of your feet rooted to the earth. This time as you exhale, now dive forward into the forward fold. Again, head releases down towards the earth. Inhale, look up halfway. So chest and heart really lift. And then on the exhale, big sigh. Ah, let some things go as you fold in. We're gonna do that again. Again, making some sound today in the practice, really working with the sound of the breath. Ah, fold inward. Let's do a third one here. So you lengthen out. Ah, let's let go of 2020 as we fold into ourselves. That is the key to clear my Yamala, more focus inward. Again, shake out the head here and then step all the way back to downward facing dog. As you feel your hands activate down into the earth, let your spine grow longer, your sit bones lift. And again, just taking some pleasure in the fact that there's nothing you have to figure out right now in your life. You're simply staying present with the physical sensations in the body that keep rising and changing and moving throughout the body. Now on this next inhale, floating forward to plank pose. Know that your knees can always be down in plank pose. But then on this exhale, we'll lift back to dog. Again, inhaling forward to plank. Pause here. 
strong core, navel drawing up. Exhale, back to dog. Last one, inhale forward to plank, firm those legs, heels back, navel up towards the spine. Don't let your thighs drop down. That's really hard on the back. Keep yourself lifted, the rib cage pulling into the body. Breathing in, now as you exhale, slowly lower all the way down onto your belly. Flatten your feet, slide your forearms forward, sphinx pose, so elbows are a little bit forward of the shoulders. Depending on your shoulder flexibility, you might be quite a bit farther forward. It's really okay. You're just honoring where your body's at. Forearms, palms press down, but the legs have to also be rock solid firm. So strong legs, glutes are strong. So you press your elbows down, sort of asymmetrically drag them back, which allows you to shine your heart forward a little bit. Now long neck here, slight drawing of the chin back. Keep those glutes engaged. They want to go back to sleep. Sphinx pose, breathing in. Exhale, we stay. Again, isometrically pulling elbows back as your heart shines forward. Let's take another breath in. And now exhale, lower. Stack your hands, one on top of the other. Forehead rest right on the hands. Let those glutes and legs go now. Come back to the sound of the breath, the ocean sounding breath. As you exhale, and by the way, as you get quite practiced at this ujjayi breath, you can also create that same sound and sensation on the inhale. When I'm teaching beginners, I often don't even have them focus on the inhale, just focus on the exhale. But again, as you get more practiced at it, you're having the sound on both the inhale and the exhale. One more breath. From here, slide arms straight out to the sides. So arms are straight out to the sides in a T. Hopefully you have the space. If you don't have the space, just have your left arm straight out to the side. Because what we're gonna do now is bend the right elbow and draw the right hand right next to the right chest. Keeping the left arm straight, roll onto the outside of the left hip as you stack your right hip on top. Now, ideally, head is on the floor, but I know we have lots of different shoulder impingements and neck issues, all kinds of good stuff. So you might have a block underneath your head or some kind of blanket underneath your head. So this is focused on opening that left side, that left shoulder. So you might feel plenty of sensation just here with hips stacked. If you need a little bit more, because that's what we're doing in yoga, trying to find some intensity to work with in the body, you might extend your right leg back, even bending your right knee, right foot to the floor. All right, this is an edge point for me. So when I find my edge points, what I do is I pause and I try to go right into the center of them, breathe into that spot and watch the exhale start to dispel some of that constriction and that tightness and that holding pattern. For those of you who are maybe really uber open and you want some more challenge, you'll bend your left knee as well. So both feet will be flat on the floor. Let's stay here for two more breaths, staying laser focused where the sensation is most intense and using the power of your breath and your conscious awareness to start to soften that area. Oh, one more breath in, exhale, slowly come out. Let's pause back in crocodile pose, hands stacked one on top of the other, forehead on the floor. This pose right here is um, such a good pose for breath work. So our diaphragm really has a, a lot more space here. So I want you to take two breaths. Again, extending the exhale a little longer and hearing your breath in the back of the throat. That should be your soundtrack for this practice today is the sound of your breath. All right, we gotta stretch out the right side. So right arm comes straight out. My elbow is in alignment with my shoulder. My wrist is in alignment with my shoulder. Left elbow bends, left hand comes right in alignment with your chest and then you roll onto your right hip. Left hip is stacked on top. So your left hand is sort of like, um, it, it's, it's where you can control how deep you go into this pose. 
So if you wanna go deeper, just press that left hand into the earth and start to open your pelvis towards the sky. You might even bend your left knee, bring your left foot to the floor. You can certainly bend your right knee as well. But wherever there is the most intensity, that's where you are focused. So you're not focused on the election. You're not focused on the rest of your Saturday, or your grocery list. You train yourself. And it is, a, it is a process of training and practice. You train yourself to be right here, right now, which is with the intensity in your right shoulder. Can I really feel it? Breathe into it and use the exhale to start to release it. Take another inhale. And now exhale, we come all the way back onto the belly. Two more breaths in crocodile pose, hands stacked, forehead on the hands, pelvis releasing. Hands eventually come right back in alignment with the chest. Here we are back in downward facing dog. Widen the feet once again. Go wide with the feet, slowly walk hands all the way back towards the feet. Forward fold, shake out that head, the neck. This time bring your hands and interlace them in the small of the back. I'd also like you to bend your knees quite a bit so much that your torso is either resting on your thighs or sort of in between your thighs. So we take the pressure out of the hamstrings. Together, breathe in and then exhale. See about allowing those arms to fall forward. Now, you might use a strap between your hands if your shoulders are quite tight. If you're really open in your shoulders, make sure the heel of your hand stays together. That'll give you some more work, some more sensation. And then we'll breathe in, use the exhale to surrender, soften through the upper shoulders and the neck. Take another breath. Ah, exhale, release hands to the floor. Now straighten the legs, press the thigh bones back, draw the belly up, crown of the head releasing. Inhale, gaze forward halfway, fingers maybe walking up the shins, and then exhale, big sigh, big release of breath as you fold. Knees bend now, arms stretch out to the side, come all the way up. Ah, exhale, hands down right in front of the heart. Release the hands, let's come back to the front of the mat. So now, oh my gosh, we've been doing so much opening through this upper back. Now we're gonna move a little faster, generate some more heat for the next uh, several rounds of sun salute. So look at your feet, plant your feet, firm legs, shoulders back. Inhale, arms sweep out to the side. Touch those palms together overhead and then exhale, fold into yourself. Now inhale, extend that compassionate heart, that innate compassion forward as you lift up and then exhale, uh, dive back in, turn in. On this next inhale, step the left foot back, deep lunge. All right, keeping this back knee lifted. Inhale, rise up to a high lunge. Hands come to the pelvis. Rooting the pelvis down, draw those shoulder blades back. Interlace fingers once again. As much as you can, straighten the arms. Again, you might have a strap here. That's not cheating. That's working with your anatomy. Shoulders draw back. Sternum lifts. Breathe in and then exhale. Ah, we're folding forward over this front leg. Those arms coming along for the ride. Breathe in. Exhale, ah, we're gonna stay here. It's intense, I know. Let's breathe in again. And now exhale, release hands. Left hand roots into the earth or a block, right arm floats up. Just a little twisted lunge here, breathe in. Exhale, feel that navel twist up to the right. Let's breathe in again. And then exhale, lower, step back, downward facing dog. Catch your breath. Shake out your head. Notice if you hold any tension in your neck in down dog. Down dog's an inversion. Our head is below our hearts. Again, such a great pose for clearing Maya Mala, that sense of separation that we all carry. 
In down dog, for good neck alignment, your ears are in alignment with your upper arms. Just check that out for yourself. Inhale forward plank. Exhale back to dog. If you'd like, flow with me two more times. Otherwise, if it's too much for you, lower all the way down to your belly and pause there. So we move back and forth between dog and plank, building core strength, building some more heat. Maybe pause on your third pass forward. And then it's a very slow lower all the way down to the earth. As you arrive on your belly, take your feet as wide as they need to go for the comfort of your back and then extend your arms back. Again, if you have this capacity, interlace your fingers. Firm the legs, draw the shoulder blades together. Inhale, lift up, Salambhasana. Exhale, we soften down about 50% of the way. Inhale, rising up, those shoulder blades really drawing together. Exhale, we soften again. Last time, inhale. Exhale, lower. Hands in alignment with the chest, back through downward. Facing dog. Feel those hands press down to elongate the spine. All right, on this next inhale, step your left foot between your hands, deep lunge. Inhale, rise up, high lunge. Hands to the pelvis. Root that pelvis down, draw the ribs in, lengthen up, shoulders draw back. Interlace the fingers as much as you can, straighten the arms and really hug those shoulder blades together. Take a breath in. And then on the exhale, we fold forward over your front thigh. Maybe your arms coming forward as well. This is a bind. I know it's super intense. Stay here. If you can hear your breath, that's really helpful in a pose like this. Breathing in, breathing out, release the fingers to the floor. Root your right hand into the floor or a block as you now float your left arm into the sky. Twisted lunge. Inhale, lengthen through the spine. Exhale, twist that navel and that heart up towards the ceiling, breathing in again. Exhale, we lower, step the back foot forward to meet your front foot. Shake out your head, relax your jawline, your face. Feel that crown, the top of the head, almost telescoping down towards the earth. Now, slight baby bend in the knees. Inhale, sweep arms out to the side. We rise up. Exhale, hands down to the heart. Release the hands. Make sure you're at the front edge of your mat. Firm legs, thighs back, tall spine, shoulders on your back. Weight comes into your right foot. Lift your left foot up, standing bhikasana. So holding on to the top of the left foot, Inner knees, inner thighs draw in. Left knee roots down, belly draws in, lengthen up, shoulders back. Options for this right arm, you could just extend your right arm up. You could also wrap it around and see about holding on to your left foot with both arms. You have to really pull those shoulders back. You decide what feels good. All right, from here, breathe in. Exhale, hands to heart, kick that left foot back through warrior three. So navel is drying up. Arms could even extend forward if you like. Bend into your right foot, left foot taps back. We come up into a high lunge. This time we're gonna interlace the fingers, pointer finger towards the sky, Kali Mudra. She is a fierce feminine energy. She's good at you know cutting through what hasn't been working. Let's breathe in, exhale. Really, that breath supports you. Let's do two more. Exhale. This last one, let's actually stick our tongue out on the exhale. That's it. Release your hands to the floor and step back to downward facing dog. So yeah, can you feel it? We're creating some heat here in the body, moving a little faster, purifying some of that tension and that division and all the stress we've been carrying. Inhale once again forward to plank. 
back to dog three times. You move at your pace or you lower down. Beautiful part about yoga is no matter where you are in terms of your practice, we can all do it together. So many ways to modify. Knees could even be down here right now. Eventually lower yourself to your belly. Again, as you arrive, take your feet as wide as they need to go. Hands in alignment with the chest, draw your shoulders together, firm your glutes. So another way to say that is your pubic bone is anchoring you into the earth. Inhale, lift your chest up. Now hover your hands, but feel the bottom tips of those shoulder blades hug together. And then exhale, lower down, palms, forehead to the earth. Inhale, rise up, chest lifts, shoulder blades hug together. Exhale, lower down, forehead to the floor. Last one, inhale, rise up, shoulder blades together. Exhale, lower. Let's just turn our face to one side. Arms relax at the side of the body and just take a moment to catch your breath. To feel the myriad of sensation in the body. To witness and observe yourself. And to focus more inward than on the external happenings in the world right now. All right, from here, hands come in alignment with the chest. We come back through downward facing dog. Several options here. I want you to move into a forward fold. So you could walk your hands back towards your feet. If you like that variation, you could also bend your knees and hop forward to the front of your mat. Either way, we're all meeting up in a forward fold, strong legs, thigh bones rooting back, belly is slightly drying up so the crown of the head can fully release. And oh my gosh, I was, come on up, inhale, rise up. I was like, what mayhem is going on outside? And it must be the Iowa City Hawkeye marching band outside my window. I can't see them because my shades are down, but it's happening. <laughs> oh, goodness. All right, we're coming back inside even when marching bands come by we draw ourselves back in hands come down to the side of the body now standing bakasana on the other side so weight is coming into the left foot now right foot lifts up so top of the right foot inner knees inner thighs hug in belly's really drawing in and lengthen up so as you lengthen your spine up root your right knee down towards the floor and then float left arm up into the sky. Such a beautiful pose, beautiful quad stretch. You're hugging in, lengthening up. Left shoulder, draw it back just a little more. Take another breath in. Now release your right foot and kick that right leg all the way back. Warrior three, balancing here. Belly has to draw up for your stability. You could even extend your arms forward if you like. Now bending into that left knee, Tap your right foot back into a high lunge. Arms float up, fingers interlace, Kali Mudra. Cut through what is not working, right? We do need to cut through what's not working. There's a lot not working right now in our world. We can work on cutting through it, maybe without all that division. I don't know, I'm hoping for that. Breathe in, exhale. Yeah, stick your tongue out on that exhale. Inhale, exhale. One more, exhale, now we release hands. Either side of the front foot. Once again, step back, downward facing dog. Hands press down, thighs root back. Inhale forward to plank. Exhale back to dog. Inhale forward to plank. Exhale back to dog. It's our last forward to plank. So let's hang out here for a moment. Again, those thighs, make sure they're lifted, heels back, belly up. Don't drop the head. So don't lose alignment of the neck here. Breathe in and then exhale lower. Inhale, rise up. Let's keep hands on the mat. 
Cobra pose, but we'll move in and out a couple times. Exhale, lower. Three times to be exact. So inhale is our second pass up, shoulders back. Exhale, lower. Last pass. Inhale, rising, 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 shoulders back, heart forward. Exhale, lower. If you can remember what cheek you weren't on last time, go on that cheek. Arms stretch to the side of the body. Buttocks release, legs relax. Okay, just a blessed moment of rest where you're not solving any of your difficulties or the world's difficulties. And instead, you're just simply fully present with sensation and breath, which are both anchoring you. The more present you are with sensation and breath, you're getting anchored to the present moment. And there is less suffering typically in the present moment than in the past or the future. All right, friends, hands, alignment with the chest. Let's come back up through down dog. It's our final forward fold. So hands either walking back towards the feet or you're taking a little hop or step forward to Uttanasana. Shake it out. Bend the knees, sweep arms out to the sides, come up to standing. Exhale, hands to heart. Beautiful, release the hands, take a wide stance on your mat. So, so actually, let me, let me give you a little more data. Not super wide, so not as wide as if we're going into a standing pose. But so you can see for me, I use two mats when I do it on video. I'm about at the width of a yoga mat and then toes turn out. We're moving into goddess pose. Goddess pose, the most feminine of the poses, but it's fierce, right? It takes a lot of energy. It takes some stamina. It creates a lot of heat in the legs, and there's this potential to really open through the chest. So let's stay here. It's also a good way to rely on the breath, where you have to rely on the breath to be able to really maintain goddess. All right. Elbows bend. Breathe in. You got this. Sink down into goddess. All right, so we're getting our root down towards the floor a little bit. I can still hear those drums outside, so I'm moving. So you might move your body too. Keep those arms up if you want, shoulders draw back, but if it feels better to have your hands on your legs or hands on your waist, listen to what you need. We're gonna add a little of that lion's breath. So inhale, exhale big. You got this. We're creating some heat, which purifies things. Another breath in. Exhale. One more. Now inhale. Oh, we rise up. Exhale, arms out 45 degrees. Lift your chest. And then exhale, lower. Bring your feet back underneath you, hip distance width apart. Palms face forward. And we're just gonna rest a moment in mountain pose. The optimal blueprint for our body, shoulders back. Long spine, long neck. Clear gaze or eyes closed. Just feeling the aliveness in you, all around you. All is well. All right, breathe in, breathe out. All right, relax it a little bit. From here, let's come down onto our mat. Now, if you have blocks, blocks are great. If you have two blocks, I'd love for you to get two blocks. If you don't, it's okay, you can do this without blocks. The other thing I might like you to have is perhaps a blanket. So we're gonna be kneeling and um, so, bony knees. You might like a blanket underneath your knees and you might have these blocks on either side of you. We are moving towards Ustrasana, my friends. Why are we moving towards Ustrasana? Because it clears the throat, the chest, the heart space. And this is where division, bitterness, anger, resentment lives all up in here. Let's try to let some of it go. Camel pose, knees bent, your toes are curled under. Let's start with hands on your pelvis. Let's begin by guiding the thighs back. So stick your seat back a little bit and then shift your hands to your pelvis. 
and lift up out of that. That's gonna bring the pelvis slightly back to neutral, but without popping those thighs forward. So you're lengthening up, shoulders back. Bring both hands around to your sacrum, your low back, and just feel the support of your hands right at your sacrum. Those thighs are still rooting back, but you're lengthening up and out of the pelvis. Take a breath in. Now as you exhale, start to draw the shoulder blades together, the elbows together, and lift your heart and your gaze towards the sky. So a little baby Ustrasana here. Hands are still at your sacrum, shoulders back, heart lifted, gaze up. Take a breath in, and then exhale. Coming back out, if it's okay for you, sit back on your heels, or you could sit back on a block. Hands rest on the tops of your thighs, thumb to your middle finger, that Akash Mudra we started with. Palms face up, long neck, let's take a breath in. Exhale, stay. Let those shoulders relax down. Let there be some more freedom in your chest, your throat, your upper back. All right, we are headed into round two of Ustrasana. So this first round, I always like to teach first round with hands on sacrum because to me, it feels actually quite safe to have the support of my hands, which allows me to really start to bend back. Now, you might keep your hands there this round, or you might work with me as we start to extend our arms back. So let's start with just getting set up well, thighs back, lengthen up, shoulders back. You might have both hands on your sacrum again, or maybe just start with your left hand on your sacrum as you extend your right arm up. Now pause here. From your right waist to your right armpit to your right fingertips, fingertips lengthen, and then rotate the right arm back, reaching for the right heel. Now from here, left arm extends up, lengthen, lengthen first, rotate back, reaching for the heels. All right, so lengthening through the spine, your gaze is up towards the sky. If you feel comfortable, draw your chin back a little bit and then allow the whole head to drop back. Keep pulling the shoulder blades together. Glutes are nice and strong. Breathing in. Now the heart leads the way as you come out of this. So you might bring your hands to your waist, coming all the way up. Woo! Sit back on your heels once again. Hands, Akash Mudra, thumb to the base of the middle finger, palms face up. Ah, relax those shoulders down. And just pause and feel. All right, so we open the eyes. Changing our mudra. So still sitting back on your heels unless this is hard on your knees. You'll be cross-legged. You can also sit on the edge of a chair for this as well. Three rounds of lion's breath. Why do we do lion's breath? Just like um, Ustrasana opens the throat, this is a breath that starts to really clear. So the, this fifth chakra that we're working with today, um, mistruths, uh, holding on to your beliefs, not being able to fully express yourself. All of that energetically gets very stuck in the throat space. So we use this breath to, I always think about it, sort of chipping away at all that you've been hearing right here. We've done this before. It's one of my favorite breaths. It's very purifying, very heating. So we're gonna do three of them. Start with fist, so thumb to palm, fingers wrap around the thumb, fist come right, at that low belly. Lengthen up, draw the shoulder blades together on the back. Take a nice deep breath in. As you exhale, stick your tongue out as far as it'll go. <sighs> Big ha sound through the back of the throat as you fold all the way forward. Hold the breath out. Now draw the fist in and up. So a little massage for the belly. When you need to inhale, inhale. You lift all the way back up. You release the fist, come back into that Akash Mudra, thumb to middle finger, palms face up. Let's take a breath here. So we hold anger, bitterness, division in the throat.
These are all normal human emotions, by the way. There's nothing wrong or bad if you're carrying a lot of anger in your throat. It's very human. Don't ever let anyone tell you any of your emotions are bad or wrong. They're all, we're wired to feel all of them. All right, second round, fist, belly, tall spine, shoulders back. Feel your roots. Inhale, breathe deeply. Exhale, stick out your tongue. <sighs> Big hop up sound through the back of the throat, all the breath out, fists move in and up. Hold the breath out as long as you can. When you're ready to inhale, the inhale floats you back up. Release your fist, thumb to the base of your middle finger, Akash Mudra. Ah, feeling clearer already. Releasing some of that neck tension, that throat tension. Shoulders releasing down away from the ears. Very natural for us to feel angry right now in light of everything that's evolving in our world. But when we carry the anger for too long, that's when it becomes problematic for our bodies, our minds, our well being. So let's use this final lion's breath to really clear some things out. Again, fists come right at the low belly, root down, lengthen up, shoulders back. Take a breath in, let it all out, my friends. <sighs> At the bottom of the breath, this come in and up. Hold the breath out. When you're ready, float back up. Release your fist. Thumb to middle finger. Let's just sit here for a moment, observing sensation. The spine is long, the neck is long, the chin is slightly drawn back. Right, breathe in, ah, breathe out, open the eyes if they've been closed. Let's transition now onto our backs. So coming out of this kneeling position all the way onto our backs again. And as you come onto your back, we start in Apanasana, knees drawn in towards chest. Rocking side to side a little bit. You might even grab for the little toe sides of the feet, happy baby. Getting that same rocking action side to side. Feet eventually releasing to the floor. So we started here at the beginning of the practice, constructive rest, knees bend, feet on the floor. Elbows bent, palms face in towards one another. So here again, we press the backs of the arms down, the elbows down so we can really lift the chest and draw those shoulders underneath. Let's try to keep this as you bring the arms back down to the floor. Now from here, working our way in and out of Setu Banda, which is bridge pose. Such another good pose for clearing our throat and our chest. So inhale, lift the pelvis up, float the arms up overhead. And then on the exhale, everything comes back down to the floor. This pose is not only good for clearing throat, but it's also such a mood enhancing pose, which is why I like to end class with this. Inhale, pelvis up, arms stretch up overhead. Exhale, coming back down to the earth. Inhale, rising up. I'm, it's very interesting how I'm teaching about drawing our attention inward because there is so much mayhem going on outside my windows right now with, I don't know, some kind of tailgating. I think the Hawkeyes must be playing at home today. I'm having slightly difficult time concentrating, but it's, so, it's such good practice, right? The external world is always beckoning us. And even if it's just one hour a week that we're committing to drawing our attention inward, it makes a difference. It makes such a huge difference. All right, now this next time that you come all the way up, I'd like you to stay up, 
bring arms back down to the side of the body. And like we did before, the elbows are bent, palms face in towards one another. You press the backs of the arms down to lift the chest up. And then, oh my gosh, you can really get those shoulders underneath you. From here, arms come back down to the floor, or you could interlace your fingers if you'd like. We're gonna hold bridge pose here, feet anchoring into the earth, inner thighs hug in. You should feel your glutes are really rock solid. As you keep pressing the feet down, maybe the pelvis lifts a little higher. Back of the head is rooted down towards the earth as well. Let's breathe in. Now let's use that exhale, that ujjayi sounding in the back of the throat to really soften you in this pose because it's intense as we hold it. Let's breathe in again. Exhale, we stay here. Again, breathing in. Exhale, we stay. Now on this next exhale, now begin to lower, but very slowly with a lot of conscious awareness, each part of the spine coming down. Eventually you'll feel your pelvis come down and how you can really start to relax the musculature of the buttocks, the pelvis, the hip. Bring our hands around to the low belly. Pause here, breathe in. All right, final pose before we head into Shavasana. Um, a variation of a shoulder stand. Inversions are, again, the magic poses that really clear our throat and our upper chest. So the variations I'd like to share with you today, if you have a block, you'll place the block underneath the sacrum and then extend the legs up into the sky. So this is a variation a variation of maybe legs up the wall. It's also, we could consider it a variation of shoulder stand. Now, if you don't have a block, it's really okay. You could certainly just extend your legs straight up in the sky. Or if you'd like to join me for elbow stand, let's attempt that. We're going to start in Halasana. In fact, because I don't want you to move your head side to side, maybe watch me first so you know where we're going, and then don't watch me anymore so that you can keep your gaze straight up. So we start in Halasana, pelvis lifts up, hands are on the back of the pelvis. You can even drop your feet all the way to the floor if you'd like, or they could be hovering somewhere here. From here then, lifting the legs up into the sky. Now, what's really important is my hands are on the back of my waistline, but the weight is in my elbows, not my shoulders. So this is not um, a traditional shoulder stand. You need a lot more props for that, but the weight is in the elbows. Legs are at a slight angle because the weight of my pelvis is settling into the hands. So once you've seen it, you can try it on your own. Now elbow stand, usually what tires out first for us is our elbows. They get sort of sore pressing into the earth, sort of burying the weight here. But stay as long as you feel like you can hold this and just know inversions like this are so powerful for clearing our mind space, our head space our throat space, right where that Maya Mala lives. And of course you can play around with your legs. You can take your legs out to the sides. Again, try to maintain the weight in the elbows, not the shoulders. From elbow stand, you could certainly just bend the knees and bring the feet to the floor. You might exit through halasana again, plow pose. And then eventually rolling all the way back down. Let's once again pause. So if you are on the block, you'll lift your pelvis up, slide the block out. We'll come back through constructive rest. Hands resting on the abdomen. And one final cool down before Shavasana. Arms straight out to the sides, feet nice and wide. Drop knees down to the right, windshield wiper. I'm pausing here with your knees 
to the right. You might slide this left arm up overhead, more in alignment with your ear, left bicep in alignment with left ear. Still hearing the sound of your breath in the back of the throat. It's just perhaps a bit more faint, a little more subtle. Inhale, legs back to center. Exhale, over to the left. Right arm now slides up overhead. Breathe. From here, as you come out of the pose, make your way into this final Shavasana, straightening the legs, covering with a blanket if that's helpful for you. Arms at the side of the body, palms face up. Take a deep breath in, and then as you exhale, final sound, big ha, as you feel your whole body melt, settle into the earth. Now in Shavasana is the big release. It's the time that we let go of the practice, we let go of the week, we let go of the year, we even let go of the breath. So I've been drawing you back to your breath over and over throughout class today. This is the time that even the breath is released. So finding a place of relative stillness. And fully letting go into this state of openness, beginner's mind. Curiosity about this opportunity to rest and to receive. I'll mind the time.
take a moment here to just allow your conscious awareness to return to your breath and breathe in. And then as you breathe out, watch how there is one final chance here to soften, to release again. And just little movements in the fingers and the toes that start to emerge and bigger movements in the body, maybe a big stretch. Eventually rolling through the fetal position. And returning all the way to your seat. To arrive at your seat, sit well, hands in front of the heart, eyes closed. Let's take a moment to feel your body much more open, grounded, compassionate place from which to view the world. Let's return to that wise teaching of the sutras, which is we suffer when we forget our true essence, the natural state of our being, and instead we go towards division. So may we all take this much more authentic, expansive, beautiful, relaxed, restored self, take it into the world wherever you're going today. Know that you have great power, your presence, your ease, your light. Shine it out into this world. It needs it. Namaste. So much love to all of you. I hope you have such a good and beautiful day. Thank you all for being here. Um, so good. Marianne said her the practice brought her body and mind calm amid the chaos. I agree. There's a lot of chaos. <laughs> That's why it's good to be going in right now. Beth, namaste. So good to have you here, Maureen. Glad you feel great. I will see you all next week. I'll be here this week as well, Tuesday, Thursday. Glad you're all feeling much more calm. Great to see you. Grandma Cheek Spanish. I love that, Doreen. Head more clear, Susanna. Yay. Oh, that's great. Joanna, I hope you don't mind if I share this. Joanna says she had an epiphany this week. She spends all week telling kids what to do. And it's nice to sit in the passenger seat and have someone else tell me what to do. I agree with you, right? Which is why I like to take yoga classes too, because sometimes just having someone else tell you where to put your body is sometimes the disconnect that we need in terms of like disconnecting from the chaos. Oh, yay, Alina. She said fifth chakra has been excessive and this is what she needed to work on today. Yay. Uh, so, so Ann Brown says, thank you, Betty. You really helped me through this week. You know what I love about that message, Ann, is that in college, my nickname was Betty. Every single one of my girlfriends from college to this day still calls me Betty. So it felt like a term of endearment when you said that. And then she corrected, oh, I meant Betsy. Oh, wonderful. And much love to you too, Mary Denmead. All right, friends. I'm going to open my shades. I'm a little worried. It's been super loud and lots of rock music and marching bands and all of that outside these windows. All my shades are down. So I have no idea what's going on out there. Uh, but there's something. There's, you know, there's always something. But bring this uh, solid, steady heart, open throat back into the world. So. All right, love you all. <laughs> Beth says, don't let them breathe on you. I will have my mask and I will go directly to my car, Beth. <laughs> it's so true, right? I know, I'm sure they're gathering in big groups without much social distancing out there. Ay, ay, ay. Crazy world we're living in. All right, much love, y'all. Have a great day. This is um, recorded. It'll be on YouTube later today. All right.